South Park has stirred up a lot of passionate emotions, but we never expected it to give us heart-wrenching feels. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 surprisingly touching South Park moments. Mom, Dad, I made a friend today! Kip, really? You did? Yeah! That means we're taking a look at moments from the South Park franchise that took a break from fart jokes and celebrity parodies to touch our hearts. And to be clear, these don't have to be straight up sad moments. You may shed a happy tear or two. All right, let's get to the list. Come on. Or maybe I'll have three beers. That's probably okay if you spread it out. Number 10, Kyle Saves Ike. From the pilot episode, Kyle and his adopted brother Ike have shared one of the show's most heartfelt dynamics. Ready, Ike? Kick the baby! I'll kick the baby. In season seven, Kyle risks losing Ike forever when his birth parents take him back to Canada. By Canadian law, I must award custody of the child to his birth parents. Yes! Yes! In one of his most personal speeches to date, Kyle tries appealing to the Canadian Prime Minister with a meaningful expression about what it truly means to be a family. Family isn't about whose blood you have in you. Family is about the people who cared about you and took care of you. We're not the same blood, but I love my little brother. As moved as we are, the Prime Minister doesn't feel the same way and promptly blows Kenny up in a show of rage. But why are you making such strange laws? I said go! Fortunately, the Prime Minister behind the curtain is revealed to be Saddam Hussein, and he's arrested on the spot. Kyle's words get through to Ike's birth parents, who realize there's more to family than just blood. He doesn't belong here. He belongs with his family. Peter, would you like to go back to your home in Colorado? Number 9. The Calves Matt Stone and Trey Parker aren't exactly what you'd call vegetarians, but they do have a thing about eating baby cows. Wait a minute. Veal is little baby cows? Yepper! Then why the hell do they call it veal? While this episode isn't anti-meat, it does stand up for the poor calves, suggesting that nobody would eat veal if the product were called Little Tortured Baby Cow. I, I did manage to get the FDA to officially change the word veal to Tortured Baby Cow. The creators further get their point across by making the calves as adorable as possible, giving them sad faces and puppy dog eyes. The boys decide to lock all the animals and themselves in their bedroom and go on a hunger strike. Though eventually thwarted by the FBI, their rescue effort is ultimately successful, as the new brand name drives down national demand for veal. In the 24 hours since the word veal was officially changed to Little Tortured Baby Cow, the market has gone dry. Seems when people see Little Tortured Baby Cow on their menus, they don't feel like ordering. Number 8. Cartman Gives Kyle CPR Following a hazardous encounter with Man Bear Pig, Kyle is left pale-faced and lifeless on the ground. When everyone else in the room is ready to declare him dead, Cartman, of all people, refuses to give up on him. The situation moves from emotional to surprisingly intense as Cartman tearfully tries resuscitating Kyle. God damn it, Kyle! You never walked away from anything in your life! Now fight! Honestly, a scene like this feels more like something you'd see on Lost or ER than South Park. Come on! Come on! Come on! As Kyle sputters and coughs back to life, Cartman is seen cradling his head as he provides him with an oxygen mask. Granted, Cartman is mainly concerned about his bet with Kyle, but nevertheless, we like to think that a part of Cartman can't handle the idea of life without Kyle. Well, at least now he doesn't have to suck anyone's balls. No! No, he has a strong heart! He wants to live! Number 7. Chef's Funeral when South Park made fun of Scientology in season 9, Chef's voice actor, Isaac Hayes, felt that he could no longer contribute to a show that mocked his religion. Hayes' sudden exit left Stone and Parker feeling sad, but slightly resentful, and they certainly show it in season 10's opening episode. I'm gonna miss him. I'm gonna miss Chef, and I, and I don't know how to tell him. Chef is offed in the most gruesome, mean-spirited way imaginable. However, the episode doesn't disregard all the good work Hayes did over the years. We're all here today because Chef has been such an important part of our lives. Chef's funeral is a genuine tearjerker, reuniting many of the people he touched, from Mrs. Garrison to Elton John. And Kyle even delivers a bittersweet eulogy about all the laughs, songs, and wisdom Chef gave us, adding that we shouldn't blame him, but rather a certain, quote, fruity little club. So you see, we shouldn't be mad at Chef for leaving us. We should be mad at that fruity little club for scrambling his brains. Number 6. Kenny Gives His Sister a Toy When Kenny's little sister Karen popped up as a background character in Season 9, we didn't expect much to come from her. In more recent years, however, Karen has played a role in some of the show's most tender moments, adding new layers to Kenny's character in the process. You are going to be okay, Karen. You have to keep believing that. 
Why did my mommy and daddy go to jail? Sometimes people do stupid things. Sometimes they don't realize what should have come first until it's too late. In season 19, Kenny has to work his fingertips to the bone merely to receive a child labor wage. But he uses his measly paycheck to purchase the lonely Karen a doll. <gasps> wow. Karen lights up at the sight of her new plaything. And although Kenny isn't the easiest character to read, we can tell that his sister's happiness is all the reward he needed. It's a simple moment that speaks volumes about who Kenny truly is underneath the hood. Hi. Number five, Kip Drordy. There's really people out there without a Facebook friend in the world? That's so wrong. Poor Kip Drordy spends his days periodically checking his Facebook page, hoping someone will be his friend. Out of pity, Kyle adds Kip as a friend, hoping to make him feel a little better. Through the unfortunate reality of social hierarchy, Kyle starts losing Facebook friends for his act of goodwill. Looking around Facebook today, we see that since adding loser Kip Drordy as a friend, Kyle Broflowski's stock is plummeting. He jumps ship to save his own reputation, which leaves Kip more depressed than ever. The episode builds to a joyous resolution, however, when Kip receives all 845,323 friends from Stan's deleted sentient profile whom he defeated from inside the Facebook matrix in a Tron-like battle for survival. <laughs> Number four, Blanket. At first, Stone and Parker were against doing a Michael Jackson episode, seeing as how the controversial pop star is an overused target for satire. The creators came around to the idea, however, when they decided to make Jackson's youngest son, Blanket, the focus. My name's Blanket. Your name is Blanket. Right, well, Blanket, I'm Howdy Doody, and these are my friends, Timsey, Winky, and Nut. Suddenly, the episode had more heart. And what's more touching? Kyle becomes something of a big brother towards Blanket in Michael Jackson's absence. All right, this is gonna sting for a second. Ow! I know, I know, be cool. Thank you, that already feels better. Kyle realizes just how neglected and alone Blanket is, telling Mr. Jefferson that he needs to stop acting like a child and take care of his own children. Let's say it's all made up, and Mr. Jefferson is just a nice guy who's trying to be a child because he never got to have a childhood. Well, that's fine, except for that he has children now. And when people have children, they have to grow up. The episode is made even more poignant when you consider that a few plot points were taken out of real life like Blanket's artificially inseminated birth, and how Jackson made his kids wear masks in public. My daddy says it's best for me to hide my face. Number three, Mysterion, the Guardian Angel. The first episode that really touches upon Kenny's relationship with Karen comes at the end of season 15, when the McCormick kids wind up in a cruel foster home. Welcome to your new home. Before we show you around, let's get one thing clear. This is a very strict religious household. Kenny can only do so much to help a scared, confused sister, but his alter ego Mysterion can do more. Karen McCormick is off limits. Taking on his superhero persona, Kenny visits Karen at night, reassuring her that she's not alone and that everything will be okay. You are not alone. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, I will always be here. Though Mysterion is generally the conduit for Kenny's darker side, in this moment, Mysterion reveals a more loving and gentle brother who will do anything to protect his loved ones. Just as Batman is Bruce Wayne's mask, Mysterion allows Kenny to express what he's truly feeling. Number two, beautiful sadness. Although the other kids frequently poke fun at Butters for his innocence and naivety, sometimes his sincerity can rub off on them. Go ahead and go. It's best we don't say anything more. There's nothing left to say. It's over. Our relationship is over. After getting dumped by his so-called girlfriend, Butters is left whimpering in the rain. Stan and his fellow goth kids thus invite Butters to join them, but he turns them down, saying there's still more to life than just pain. Just because Butters is heartbroken doesn't mean that he himself is broken. If anything, the sadness makes him appreciate life more. Well, yeah, and I'm sad. But at the same time, I'm really happy that something can make me feel that sad. It's like, it, it, it makes me feel alive, you know? Moved by this touching point of view, Stan realizes that it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all, and ditches the goth kids. He's right. I don't even know who I am anymore. I like liking life a lot more than hating it. Screw you guys, I'm going home. It's a life-affirming moment, reminding us that sadness is an integral part of the human experience. So I have to take the bad with the good. So I guess what I'm feeling is like a beautiful sadness. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. 
If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Kenny's Sacrifice Though we can never quite understand what he's saying, Kenny is often the voice of reason and virtue in South Park, and this is best exemplified in their feature film. After helping a heartbroken Satan see the light, Kenny is granted one wish. You showed me that I had to get away from him. Just make any wish you want, and I shall grant it. Rather than asking to be resurrected, Kenny wishes for everything on Earth to go back to the way it was. He said that his wish is for everything to go back the way it was before this horrible war. Kenny, you realize that means you'd go back too. Before returning to hell, however, he reveals his face and speaks clearly for the first time, bidding his friends farewell. Goodbye, you guys. He then disappears, and we next see him flying up to heaven, his sacrifice rewarded, leaving everyone in the theater choked up. This ending elevated South Park into new territory, proving it's much more than a foul-mouthed cartoon. Hey, they're capable of other emotions, who knew? <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, so what do you think has been the most touching moment in South Park's history? Let us know in the comments or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayden. Also, be sure to like and subscribe and please watch this other video.